everyone, it's Louise McKay with Louise McKay Art, and thanks for joining me. Um, today I'm just planning on playing around. I've dug up my regular paints, as I call them, because I want to do an open cup today. And these paints have been sitting around for, oh brother, since probably early November, late, November, late uh, October. And um, they've thickened up and they've changed. So what I did is I pulled them all out, I consolidated a bunch of them together because I had probably 15 different containers, probably more, probably 20 like this and this, and I combined similar colors together and I have a very various uh, consistencies. Even though it felt good when I was stirring them, I do a drip test. So I get a piece of cardstock that I get from the mail and uh, I take the colors after I think they're at a good consistency and I just and I lay down a dot, similar size, of each color on the cardstock, and then tip the cardstock over for about five seconds and see where they run. And in this case, you see in the first run, they're a little bit all over the place. The yellow is the least running, and the blue is the fastest running. The others are kind of in between, but between the yellow and the teal and the silver, third one from the left, and the blue, I have the biggest variation. So then I make some adjustments. I add a little water or PM to the slower running ones to try to get them to the similar consistency as the faster run ones. So with the second drip test, you can see I've made an improvement with the yellow and the silver, but I still needed to make another adjustment. So by the third time, I get them all running at about the same speed. The other colors in between are all close enough, so I don't worry about them so much. So with this, I'm going to go into the pour and go from here. So I'm back before I've even poured the canvas, but what I realized in my base paint here that's been sitting around, it's got all kinds of little boogers in it. So what I'm going to do before I uh, pour this out on the canvas, even though this is a test canvas and it's a practice canvas and everything here is for fun. Um, I'm going to just show you what I do to strain it before uh, I'm going to pour this because I need to strain out the, the junk. I just put a piece of nylon over the top of another cup, rubber band it on, get a couple rubber bands, get this out of the way. make a little divot for it. And then I just start pouring the paint that needs to be strained into the next cup. Because I don't want to spend half my day fishing out junk. Even though this is for fun and it's a test canvas, I'd rather avoid all the hassle. So I just wanted to show this to you first. You can see. It doesn't take that long. But you get the idea. So I'm gonna shut you off and bring you back once I've got the canvas flooded. All right, so I basically flooded my canvas now I'm going to give it a torch. Now this is all leftover scrap paints on my quote unquote regular pour. So there's just a complete mixture of things in here. So I'm going to do um, an open cup. I'll probably do an open cup in a couple spots and we'll see how this goes. So I'm gonna put one here. Lay a little extra black down or gray, whatever color this is, my base. Pop my cup in there. I have enough to kind of seal it a little bit. Maybe not have enough. 
enough to seal it. It won't be the end of the world. Hope everyone's doing good out there. As you can hear, my school behind my house is getting out. Never a dull moment. So, like I say, I've reached into my, uh, all my regular paint inventory, and I have assembled about, I don't know, even know, 20 different paints over here. And I'm just going to start drizzling it in here and see what happens. So this is called an open cup. get with this is some cell activation. And I know the higher I go, the more chance of that because it's going to basically force air into the paints as they churn around underneath this base. And I have uh, just a whole bunch of colors and want to work through here.
Okay. Let's give it a couple tilts and see where we go. It's been a while since I've uh, played some played with something this large. Get that to the corner before that one hits the edge, before that yellow green spot over here hits the edge. Come on, it's a race! It's a race! Oh, the gold one. take some of this off, leave this negative space over here, stretch out that top portion, because that's what I really like. Let me see if I can tilt it toward you guys so you can see better. I can see better too. So I'm just gonna run it down there. Having the BAM in the middle would have been good. So the BAM is referring to something I forgot to do after I laid down the open cups and that is after the open cups were down, I would have just like drizzled or kind of splattered some lines of paint, which would have then taken up the dead space between the two open cups and made the gray a little more interesting in there. That's what the BAM is I'm referring to. I'll do it in a future pour, I'm sure.
Green was under there in this gold. Let's see what other surprises I can find in there. So I'm gonna pick up the pace here, go double time again. I do a lot of fiddling around, but what has captured my attention primarily is the great gray divide between these two open cups. I wish I'd done a BAM to take up some of the space in there, take up some of the negative space, but what works out is I add a few embellishments throughout that section to match the open cup remnant that's at the top center nearest me. gold in here which I'm not thrilled about but I do like all this gradation over here and over here that's really cool this side seems to be a lot more muted and not as dynamic as this side if I ran ran a little bit of this teal through here it might make this a little more interesting That's a wrap on this guy. Thanks for watching, everybody. And until next time, take care. Stay healthy. Bye now.